continuous linear incision by using uh, uh, force applied by cystotome and you can apply all uh, all the 30 60 degree uh, all over the anterior capsule to achieve the anterior capsule axis but if you if you create this flap and you hold it away from this uh, uh, anterior capsule uh, creating an angle this uh, is called uh, shearing and the shearing power uh, could be achieved using forceps so two two ways can be applied to achieve the capsule axis other by uh, could be by forceps or by, uh, by sh for shearing and uh, using this tool as uh, a tearing. The idea is to create anterior window in the, uh, in the anterior capsule. It should be circular and central and in correct size about five millimeter to cover one, uh, one millimeter of the, uh, uh, of the optic. Uh, it, it is uh, should be perfect because uh, it, uh, it may get to many problems uh, as disintegration, capsule phimosis, opacification, and night glare, and uh, should be uh, thoroughly done because it is a mandatory milestone of successful uh, FACO. In this case, we will use the capsule axis using the stone and creating a flap, and this flap should be uh, flat always like this, Pushing, pushing the uh, flap circularly. This is the tearing using the stone, and it could be applied. Uh, then the uh, capsule uh, capsule excess forceps, as it can, it could be used through uh, the side port, and uh, keeping uh, keeping the AC well formed and the keeping the intra uh, intra the pressure in the anterior chamber is maintained all over the maneuver and uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, the vesicle elastic is tamponading the anterior uh, uh, capsule. Uh, uh, this is preferable than the forceps because the forceps should be used through the main incision and uh, this may lead to. Uh, escape of uh, viscoelastic all the time and should be replaced all the time. And also, the uh, the forceps may the forceps may elevate the anterior lamellae of the uh, of the wound, causing kinking and uh, um, uh, and uh, astigmatism of the cornea and may affect the clarity uh, of the sight of the surgeon. So it is preferable uh, for the uh, uh, anterior capsulotomy using the stone, but. In some cases, you can use the uh, system uh, uh, forceps. Uh, like this, this is a case of nuclear cataract, and you created the, uh, the flap and the push. Uh, now there is a radial extension done, so I have to use the forceps to, uh, to uh, control the edge, and it could be controlled 36 degree and and the smallest nip is more safe, smallest, not more than 90 degree. And uh, we sh you have to remember that uh, as, as if you uh, um, uh, hold the, uh, the uh, flap away from the uh, capsule, you are uh, elaborate a counter action on the zinules because the zinules always has a counter action uh, uh, to the direction of centrifugal force. And it causes uh, uh, the increase, uh, increase ability to uh, radial extension. So the forceps should be always uh, towards the center. So in some cases, you can use the, uh, the uh, system and forceps like this in, ca in case of hold the capsule and they're trying to create the to complete your uh, uh, capsule excess but now there is fibrosis it is impossible to complete and this is it tough so I have to use the scissor to complete this uh, uh, to complete this uh, uh, capsule excess also I can use the scissor in cases of radial extension like this uh, the, the tag remained because of radial extension. It should be uh, completed with the scissor. Also, 
in cases of uh, uh, intumescent cataract with high interlenticular pressure, there is ability and tendency to increase the, uh, the, uh, the puncture of the storm radially uh, towards the equator of the lens and it could be escape, uh, escape uh, to the posterior capsule leading to uh, a nucleus drop, uh, drop uh, in the posterior segment and it is very difficult to be, uh, to be uh, managed. So uh, the, it should be always the flap uh, curved to avoid the radial extension. Always the flap should be small and uh, uh, and uh, curved to avoid extension. Uh, so it has uh, this one of the challenging cases uh, of uh, hypermature cataract showing calcification and thicken the capsule after staining of the anterior, of the anterior capsule uh, after injection of air. This is too used, created a flap. Now the calcification avoid to complete the excess. So I use this, uh, the scissor because thickened and wrinkled. As you see, the, the wrinkles could be seen in the anterior capsule. Yes. Sam, you are now uh, running uh, 13 minutes. 13 minutes? Yes. OK. This is, an, this, is the, the, this is a very thick capsule. And I will show the capsule uh, ended by uh, scissor. And I will show the capsule how thickened. Look, look, it is laser-like and very thickened showing calcification. This is a case of intumescent cataract to avoid the avoid extension of the uh, of the of the uh, uh, of the anterior capsule uh, uh, flap. It uh, could be done in two steps. One smallest one small one small rexes like this, and then decompression of the lens matter using the double way to release the interlenticular pressure. And now the uh, interlenticular pressure is released. And now the radial, uh, after tamponading the anterior chamber uh, with the micro scissor, I can create small snip and then I can complete, uh, I can complete the uh, rexes using the forceps safely because the interlenticular pressure is uh, released. This is a case of uh, congenital uh, Marfan syndrome or uh, uh, some dehiscence, uh, congenital dehiscence of the capsule. This line showing a very, very, uh, very important sign because it, as you see, it is uh, uh, straight. A straight means that the, the renewals in this area is uh, healthy and stretching the, uh, the equator of the lens and also in this side, it is uh, healthy and, uh, and stretches the equator. So, uh, uh, so you can use this uh, capsule uh, and the zinules. Don't lose it. As you know, to use the CTR, you will lose the zinules uh, power uh, and you will depend on the CTR. So in this case, it, you can use the capsule uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and you can implant the IOL in the bag. As you see now, this very resilient uh, uh, capsule, and you know uh, that the as as a patient, the youngest patient and the youngest age is the high elasticity of the capsule and the high tendency to uh, extend radially. So you have to create the anterior capsule. So you have to create. The, yes. Yeah. Now you are 15 minutes, and we need. Yes, time. I have 20 minutes. I, I have just five minutes more, please. Uh, you need five minutes for presentation, but we need also something for discussion if you want. This, uh, this uh, with the audience. I will show you all this implantation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We will, will, we will get you extra five minutes, but for the other to be committed. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. This is IOL implanted in the bag, and in spite of the area of the essence, you will see the the uh, the haptic is in the bag and the, the uh, can push 
the area of uh, the uh, of area of uh, zonular dehiscence and it will push it and so you you used the, the nules and you didn't lose the nules, the nules in this case. This is the end of the procedure. Yeah. It is centralized without CTR. Another case, showing uh, now I will try to uh, shear the anterior capsule and it is very resilient very uh, highly elastic this is another another case of uh, congenital cataract total white cataract it will start to side port incision to uh, to start the staining of anterior capsule and uh, to control the intra uh, intracameral pressure because there is no another uh, any other incisions present, so one only incision uh, through the side port, and then uh, viscoelastic is injected uh, to tamponade the anterior capsule, and now tearing of the anterior uh, anterior capsule after uh, after the storm using the micro scissor. Yeah, using the micro rexes forceps right now. Yes, yes. And after completing the rexes, I uh, created the side port in the other side, and I will use the bimanual irrigation aspiration to reduce intra uh, intra uh, lenticular pressure, and I will keep the central uh, nuclear area uh, as a scaffold to keep the posterior capsule. As you know, uh, there is uh, you, you can uh, find some. Uh, uh, posterior, uh, polar uh, anomalies uh, or posterior intuponus or adhesion in the uh, lenticular ligament and uh, you can lose the case. So I leave this, uh, this uh, uh, lens, uh, nucleus, uh, to the end of the, of the uh, operation, uh, keeping uh, as a scaffold to keep the posterior capsule uh, clear. Uh, I thank you for all of audience and any question if you want. Thank you, Dr. Hisham, for your nice presentation. Dr. Hisham Fauzi, he is our former professor. He is our great teacher, and we always respect all our teachers. That's why we gave him extra five minutes. Thank you. Yeah, OK. The ground is open for the audience to send their questions through the chats or to, uh, uh, to raise their hands. And Dr. Ehab Sarwat will admit them as long as we are stuck to the five minutes discussion period. Go ahead, Dr. Hisham. Yes. Dr. Ehab? Is anyone is raising his hand right now? No. No. no, I, 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 used, no. I, I, I received one of the chat questions. One of the audience was asking about what was the cause of ectopia lentis in your case? Of? What was the cause of ectopia lentis? Uh, this is uh, uh, it, it, it was a congenital anomaly of uh, area of the essence, uh, but without any association of uh, systemic manifestations like Marfan or Marchizani. It, uh, it could be uh, only traumatic or uh, uh, coloboma uh, at this area, but it uh, wasn't uh, any uh, associated with any systemic manifestation. Yeah. Could you please exit the, uh, the live sharing, the, the share you are doing now? Uh, is it Screen so we can see the uh, others and we we see if somebody is asking or something. Uh, Dr. Ehab? Yes? Uh, do you have any questions from the chat? Uh, no. Till now I have no questions. Uh, uh, Dr. Ismail is asking you, Dr. Hisham, is it difficult yes. to switch from uh, cystotome to, uh, uh, to the microorexis? What, what would you prefer in these cases? I couldn't hear, sorry. Would you Professor please repeat the question? Dr. Mahmoud you can ask by yourself. Uh, Dr. Hisham, is it difficult during the surgery to switch from micro forceps to, uh, to uh, cystotome or vice versa? Yeah, it is easy uh, as if you are controlling the intracameral uh, pressure and uh, uh, it is wise to uh, avoid uh, much uh, 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 incisions and you keep you keep only one port 
to add uh, to add viscoelastic and to complete your lexus through one port to control the intra uh, intra camera pressure in the anterior chamber tamponading tamponading the anterior capsule to make it flat all the time and you know of course uh, uh, as much as you do uh, more uh, more incisions you will lose more viscoelastic and the intra camera pressure will be out of control and this is uh, will make uh, the uh, uh, the, uh, the, the change in maneuver is more harder. Yes, it is a very good trick to keep only one incision during the rexus until finalizes. Very yeah. good trick. Actually. Dr. Hisham, I have another two questions. One from uh, Dr. Islam Magdi. He is asking when rexus extends. When uh, it is very important to question because you know you have to know what is the forces affect the extension of your flap. He is asking you, you, you uh, how did you manage to access in the other direction or you continue with the other direction? The, 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 main, the main point in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in management is prophylaxis. How to prophylax the extension? You have to know that uh, the powers affecting the extension of your flap. The, yes. uh, the, uh, the plasticity and the elasticity of the capsule the intra-camera pressure, the intra-lenticular pressure, the pressure posterior to the lens, and the power of the zinules. You, 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 pull the, you pull the anterior capsule against the zinules power. So yeah. uh, as much as the zinules help, you can complete your uh, situation. So uh, you have to calculate all the forces. Yes. Yeah, there's another question from Dr. Sayed Tilbani. He's asking, is it possible to implant an IOL in, in the bag in such a cases? Uh, I could, uh, sorry, can you repeat? Is it possible to implant an interocular lens in the bag in such a cases? In which cases? The, the, the cases with, the, with, with extension of the... Uh, it depends. It depends. If, uh, as I as I show you, uh, as I showed in the uh, the uh, the uh, the case before this one, if you if you see the equator of the lens as the area of the hessens flat, yeah. this means you can use the zinules alone. Yeah. Provided, a... provided, provided the area of the hessens is less than uh, uh, ninety degree. Too many but, questions is coming right now. Uh, uh, just a minute I have to complete the answer. Okay. Uh, if you see, if you see the equator of the lens is curved, this means the the, the size renewals is weak. So the equator of the lens, uh, the area of the hessens is weak, and it should be tamponaded uh, and fixated either by CTR according to the area of the hessens of the renewals. Yeah. Okay, there's another question. Uh, when radial extension happened to the posterior capsule, especially at uh, mature cataract, is it better to convert to extra capsular or you continue with? It, 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 the safest maneuver is the best maneuver for the patient. Of it course. depends according to your, your skills, your experience, and, uh, and when to shift and how to shift if you, uh, you shouldn't go for a case, a difficult case, and you're still, you're still in the beginner uh, or the area of, uh, era of beginning uh, experience. But in, uh, if you have expert and you can, you can manage, you can go. Okay, now the, the discussion time for Professor Hisham is over. Uh, I am asking Dr. Hisham if you could please get out of the sharing screen. Uh, and uh, I will ask Professor Mahmoud Smail uh, to uh, start Dr. Rakesh. the talk. Dr. Rakesh Dr. Ferris. Stop sharing, please, Dr. Hisham. Yes. Okay. Dr. Rakesh uh, Ferris, yeah, Dr. Mohammed. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, so I'm sorry for this. Uh, Dr. Rakesh, uh, Rakesh Shakia, he is the head of the glaucoma and the cataract surgery in Sudguru Hospital in Chitrakot, India. He is one of the fastest uh, cataract surgeons worldwide, and the, we are waiting for him to uh, give us some of his expertise in this uh, program. Go ahead, Dr. Rakish. The time allocated for you, Dr. Rakish, is 15 minutes plus five for the audience. So don't go for the audience. For mm -hmm. Dr. Risham, we cannot do anything. Otherwise, we could be fired. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. 
Dr. Rakish? Dr. Rakish? Yeah, I'm saying the screen. Rakish? Share your screen. Yes, sir. Share your screen and start your presentation, please. Oh, God. If you have problems, you can switch to Dr. Mahmoud Smail, then you go back. Yeah, I, I want to share my screen, actually. They are unable to share, actually. You are, look, I can ask Dr. Mahmoud Smail to present, then you figure out if you have any troubles, you go back, okay? Yeah. Or you, or you want to get a trial right now? Yeah, I'm just trying. No, I, I will give you a trial. We, then. We, we can help Dr. Mohammed. No, no, yeah, no. Yes, okay. now you are yes. screen now. Yeah, okay, now, okay, go ahead. Make it full screen, please. Uh, how to do yeah, the full down. screen? Down, down. For the screen, yeah, rakish. The, yeah. the, the cup, the cup, down. Sign, down. cup sign down. Cup down. sign down to the right. S switch to the full screen, rakish. As if yeah, your presentation is Dr. Rakish. Just a minute. Yeah, yeah. How to, how to full screen? He, he, may, he may press F5. He may press F5. Press F5, okay. B rakish, press F5. Fire. No, no. F5. F5. Just a minute. Hello, yeah. my professors. Hello, Sam. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Rakesh. Yeah. yeah. Rak Rakesh, do you hear me? Yeah, I'm here. You at, at, the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the bottom. Yeah, just here. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Go ahead. Excellent. Go ahead. Perfect. Okay, thank you. So, this is the one is coming is what, what the please move the uh, actually this type. <clears throat> take take it. So, uh, are you can you hear me? Yes. yes. You go ahead. Yeah. So the journalopathy is the actually. Sorry. So, general path is the deficiency of the journal support for the lenticular capsule and it is associated with the ST of trauma, previous ST like the filleting surgery or any post segment surgery and any systemic condition like the Marfan syndrome or the <clears throat> some Bill Marcy syndrome or they are the family history or when you actually plan for the subluxation cataract, you always actually uh, examine the other eye. Sometimes the subluxation presents in the other eye also. And one thing is more the cello AC with the relatively uh, slightly axial length slightly higher. So we can the chance of the subluxation is the in this type of the cases slightly higher. And second thing, the important to plan the possible situation that may arise intraoperatively. So uh, how can I remove this? Uh, I don't know. So actually, you can actually intraoperatively, you can notice tilted or stented lens, hypodonosis, lucid intra interval, red reflex between the margin of the iris and lens. And when you start the capsule access, sometimes you can notice that some fall of the entry capsule. So it is very difficult to puncture. So you always uh, actually puncture with the cystitone. Sometimes the rotation of the lens is very difficult. And sometimes the donor dialysis occurs during the eye rotation and the journal dialysis during the eye rotation or during the lens rotation also. And sometimes the lens capsule can be entrapped with the help of uh, with the probe. And uh, you can also notice the vitreous prolapse into the entry chamber. And most significantly, the sudden deepening of the entry chamber is frequently the first sign of the journal disruption and the posterior capsule rent. So uh, regarding the, according to the CVRT, the journal dialysis can be divided into the three, the more than uh, actually less than 90 degrees, the three clock hour is the mild journal dialysis. And uh, uh, it is uh, in the moderate journal dialysis is actually the three to six clock hour and the severe subluxated cataract is more than six clock hour. So actually for the beginner's point, we, I am concerned with about uh, only with the mild to moderate subluxation. Because the severe journal dialysis is very the uh, other topic we can uh, uh, we can cover in another talk. 
So when the surgery in the progress, when the your journal dialysis notice, so there are the two things. Depending upon the your experience, you can convert to SICS or EC, ECC, or you can actually uh, continue with the fecal multiplication. With the they are the two devices. They are the equator uh, uh, <coughs> supporting device and the capsule supporting device. So these are the capsule supporting device actually with the uh, uh, capsular tensor ring. So this uh, impart the centrifugal force to the bag and transmit the tension uh, from the intact journal to the area of the journal dialysis and the uh, increase the so the advantage is that they increase the bag stability reduce the risk of the operative complication <laughs> and pre-operative capsular uh, contraction and uh, many studies say the PCO formation also reduce with the implant risk of the uh, CDR and improve the oil <coughs> centration also so there are the many CTR are actually there It is the, like uh, this the conventional CTR have the two loops and uh, our conventional CTR have the two eyelids and uh, they are the many modified CTR available uh, that have the one loops or the, then the other side loop, they are the two loops and they are the other uh, CTR segments. They are the very easy to actually use <coughs> when the CTR is very uh, sometimes not used in the case of some uh, 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 tears, uh, some the capsular tear or some PC range. And this is the other other type of the CTR have the loops. Actually, this is called Henderson CTR. So the the advantage of this CTR, the removal of the cortex is very easy in this type of CTR. So the other uh, equipment is the ca capsule supporting devices like the capsular hooks and uh, some iris hooks. So the capsular hook is support the actually capsule and uh, to the uh, scalar or you can insert before the FACO multiplication and uh, uh, the support the capsule and you can uh, continue the FACO multiplication and after that we can put the CONE or CTR. So they are the, what are the advantage like uh, the question is arises here. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. Question is arises here when and which size of CTR should be implanted. First thing is that uh, the any point after the capsular access is uh, made, you can put, uh, implant the CTR. The CTR should be implanted as late as possible, but as soon as necessary during the case of compromised journey. And uh, they are the only one contraindication <coughs> of the CTR. One is the anterior and posterior. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. One the anterior and uh, posterior uh, capsular tear is there. So we can't use the CDR. There are many uh, size of the CDR like the 12 mm or 13 mm, 14 mm. And according to the size of the <coughs> capsular bag, you can implant it. But appropriate size is the 13 mm. And the CT segments, they are the very small segment with one eyelid. And these then can easily or in the very <coughs> severe journal dialysis cases. Uh, we can use in the more than one CT segment. And the CT <coughs> Sioni ring can be used in the when the dialysis is slightly more than four clock hour. So I am <coughs> sharing the one uh, my two video. One is the hypermature cataract. So I noticed the uh, journal dialysis during the multiplication. And uh, <coughs> <coughs> sorry guy. I don't know what happened. Yes. And the second case is the hypermature cataract with the journal dialysis three to four clock hour. And uh, one is my friend when I was in the tenth, and uh, he was actually playing the cricket, and is the stop the trauma. So he had the uh, subluxation more than uh, six clock hour. So, so I put this type of cases. Just I. Go ahead. I'm just sharing three nine.
first you close the first uh, session then we can uh, actually share the data the screen yeah you can you can get out of this uh, microsoft powerpoint then you go your video and you present if you want if you want close the uh, powerpoint presentation okay. <clears throat> and then go okay. to your video files and present. So are you here that this, the voice is recorded in this case? Must know about the anatomy of the zonular fiber that originate from the basal lamina. You can mute the uh, of and insert into the landscape at the equator region. These fiber play an important role in the lens stability. Can you hear my voice? Yes, I'm hearing it. Lens stability. Zonal dialysis may be existing and brought into existence by the operating surgeon. Zonal compromise complicates every step of better surgery, making the face serious challenges in terms of safety and visual outcome. The detection of the zonal dialysis at the earliest remains the crucial point, which determines the subsequent management and final outcome of the surgery. This is still on the uh, slide of the zonal dialysis with the use of CDR in the simple use and skill technique. CDR has two holes in each end. What is the key? You hear me? Rakesh. You hear me? Yeah, yeah I'm here. You. We are still on the first slide of your presentation. Yeah. There is. Are you, my, uh, you hearing my voice? Yeah, I'm hearing your voice, but we are still on the first, the title slide. We are on the title slide yet. It doesn't move. It is moving. Yeah. I think that there's some technical problem with you now. This patient anterior landscape is checked by the minimal use of weapon to improve the visibility of the axis margin. 5.5 mm axis was patient with a desirable size for a You hear me? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. What is the problem? The, the, the screen is still on the title slide, it is not moving. Is it video? Yeah, the now is the video starts. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Internet is slow, I think. This, I implanted CDR yeah. with the help of the injector. I was noticed small piece without a so I implanted intraocular lens in the bag. Post-operative lens was centered with PCB 6Y9. This was a case of capsular access may be changed due to absence of contraction. After initial capsule clear with system, I always apply cherry force with a data pressure toward the injection to make simpler access, gentle hydrodesection done at multiple sites. Now uh, yeah, the stabilized by you got 15 minutes to How many minutes, minutes do you need? Yeah. How many minutes will you need to present? You are running out of time. You are now 15 minutes. This is the last one. This is the last one. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, you this ring has additional switching 
for scleral fixation. A tangy rope rolling double arm suture is passed through the eyelid for the scleral fixation. And Sioni ring is introduced through the side port or main port and implanted into capillary bag with the help of MacPherson and Sinsky hook. Ensure first eyelid goes into the capsular bag and rest of the ring gently dies. <coughs> Are you finished? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Much. Now the ground is open for the audience to start questions for Dr. Rakish. Yeah. The chat is open now. If I don't have questions about uh, Dr. Sh Dr. Rakish yet, uh, there was a complaint that the video was not working properly. Uh, 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 somebody hand Safwat is asking, please, Dr. Rakish, declare point yeah. of capsule attention uh, CT, CT and drain <clears throat> which number of hours and uni issue with the hypermetrobic eye. Who's <clears throat> and cons of uh, CTR after capsular excess or after timing of application and uh, the processing, if you want. Actually, I initially actually say that the uh, when the CDR should be implanted. So yeah. the question is initially actually I just uh, uh, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> just a minute. Yeah. Uh, Actually, <clears throat> the CTR can be implanted in the any any time after the capsular access. So, actually, the CTR should be actually implanted as soon as possible when you notice the jundular dilation, or as soon as uh, actually late or when the completion of the FAPO. <clears throat> the there are the many guidelines actually for the actually CTR. If you want to, uh, if you want the some few guidelines. Okay. Yeah, that's why they're asking. Yeah. If the actually the journal dialysis is less than two o'clock hour, you always sometimes the, we can rotate the three piece aisle on the journal dialysis area, so you can just expand the bag easily. And sometimes the journal dialysis is between the two to four o'clock hour, so you can insert the simple CTR. When the journal dialysis is actually more than four o'clock hour, so you can use the modified Sioni with the one loop and uh, you can use the CT segment also. <laughs> and the, when the journal dialysis is more than four o'clock hour with generalized bigness, so we can use the CT segment mode. CT segment with, uh, with, with more, one fix, more than one fixation point, you mean? Yeah, we can, uh, more than one can be used. Or when can easily yeah, yeah. Uh, work when uh, any time. <clears throat> and with the Sioni ring. Let me ask. Time the, when the journal dialysis occurs more than actually more than six o'clock hour. So you can uh, actually depend upon the surgeon to as we can uh, actually convert into or uh, SIC or SIC to the ECC or plan for the second year for the SFL or RS college or the many techniques are available. Okay, <clears throat> thank you very much. Now uh, we another have question. Another question that we have a question now. Okay, go ahead, Dr. Sam. <clears throat> no, no, there is another question in the in the chat. Uh, Dr. Rakesh, there is uh, so, some, some uh, one of our colleagues asking you about if you if you discovered intraoperatively the general dialysis, which was mild, so moderate, and the fecal completed, uh, no CTR available. It's better to implant PMMA 
the, the hard IL or the foldable one? No, we can actually, the, if you have the three-piece IL is very better for the uh, for this type of situation, actually. It's yeah. the multi-piece, three-piece. Foldable IL. Uh, uh, can you use the, if the FACOM multiplication you can the foldable three-piece <clears> or uh, if the, you can convert into the, you can use the hard lens PMM. Uh, okay, or may or, or this may depend upon the position of the dialysis. If this, if it's superior, it can implant a, a, if a hard uh, be a hard IL even in the sulcus, because on on uh, on sitting uh, when when the patient is sitting, the, Some, there is no fear from it's dropping. Just, yeah, when the, sometimes the CTR is not available when the journal dialysis is slightly more than four clock hour. So you can put the IL in the in the sulcus. And then you can do the capture. Capture yeah. is must in the start Cap of this. Capture optics. And you yes. can do and the keep the uh, haptic the horizontally. Yeah, Dr. Rakesh. Perpendicular to the journal dialysis. Dr. Rakesh, I think yeah. if you're doing your dialysis and you don't have the uh, CTR to fix it and something like this, uh, 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 as you said, you could use the three B's foldable IOL. Yeah. Or if it is not available, you could use the uh, the I the uh, BMM IOL and yeah, you, you can. insert it in the back. You can <clears throat> insert it in the back and use the haptic <clears throat> as uh, in place of uh, in the position of the uh, dialyzed. Actually, when the general dialysis is less than two clock hour, yeah, less than two clock hour, so you can put the haptic. Yeah. Or in the, in the in the direction of the journal dialysis. So because you can use the three piece or the PMMA hard lens very easily. When the yeah, journal dialysis is more than four clock hour, you can uh, put the IL in the sulcus and capture should be done. If you put it on the sulcus and you have to position it well away from the position of the uh, dialysis, otherwise it might creep yeah. in the vitreous. Okay? Yeah. Uh, okay. <clears throat> now, yeah, I have a question, please. Yes. Yeah, Dr. Jam. Last question is Dr. Yeah, one question, please. Uh, uh, some in some cases uh, with subluxations, the vitreous may be presented in front of the uh, of the lens behind the uh, the iris, escaping in, uh, in the anterior chamber. Uh, would you like to uh, to start with vitrectomy or to postpone the vit uh, vitrectomy step uh, to uh, to be done after implantation? No, no. Actually, the vitrectomy should be done before the implantation. Actually. Any type of the vitreous into the antechamber, the cut before the insertion, everything. Otherwise, you are going to apply. I always cut the vitreous. Even it is knuckle, uh, small knuckle, uh, with, uh, with herniated uh, without um, vitreous prolapse in uh, filling the anterior chamber. I mean, small knuckle in front of the. Uh, uh, no problem. If the vitreous is not come out in the antechamber, you can put the uh, put the aisle and leave it. And put the pilot card on the concept of pupil. Yeah, okay. Now, okay. Uh, uh, thank I'm you. Not, like, yes, yes. Very nice presentation, my I friend, have, uh, Rakesh. Thank you. Thank Sam, you, sir. You are running okay. out of time now. Okay. Uh, we we mm -hmm. have to give the chance now to Professor Mahmoud Smail, our head of the department, for the other of Samoj department. He is the, uh, our team leader, surgeon, refractive, and cataract surgery. Please start, Can you please uh, unmute? Uh, yes, yes, sir. I will do it. I will. We do are it. hearing you now. You can hear me. Okay. Yes. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I continue with uh, our plan in uh, today, and uh, my presentation is about bimanual FICO. And bimanual FICO has a very uh, short-term uh, experience, but I would like to express that. There is no more nice patients anymore. Patients are looking for high safety and efficacy for the reproducibility. Reproducibility means that you have to do the surgery every time, getting the same result every time. So there is no excuse for this. We do tackling the, during tackling the nucleus in FECO massification in the coaxial normal FECO, we have a crucial steps. These crucial steps you all know by now and the fracture of the nucleus might be done by several techniques. One of them, the divide and conquer, which is completely you know, disappearing nowadays. Everybody is doing chopping. The chopping technique can be quick chop or stop and chop as everybody is doing. But there is a conflict of fluids during coaxial fake. You have to 
uh, uh, aspirate parts of the nucleus and emulsify it from one port and from the other port there is fluid coming out so this will make a traffic jam inside the anterior chamber so the fluidics is not so innocent and this might lead to some turbulence and the turbulence can injure the endothelium during the surgery. So there is a new, new terminology which was uh, 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 yani arised in the late, uh, ten, late uh, uh, 19, uh, year 2015, microincision cataract surgery, which they call it MIX. So why do we we'll think about MIX? Small incisions, have tight wounds, better fluidics, there is no opposition from the irrigation, and of course there is, will be less ultrasound during the surgery. This might include difficult rexes, as Dr. Hisham Fauzi has shown us. Of course, corneal burn can happen, and of, so we still don't have a, a very reliable intraocular lenses with the sub two millimeter incision in front. So what is bimanual? Bimanual means the irrigation is from one side, and the ultrasound aspiration is from the another side. So there is not coaxial. They have the irrigation from one side and you have the aspiration and the ultrasound from the other side. We started this technique with the irrigating chopper. And this was the MD thesis of one of my candidates, Dr. Ayman el wash and this was about seven to eight years ago. I, we, you, you cut the sleeve, you are not irrigating from one side, you are irrigating from the left hand side, you, are, you only have two incisions. Uh, the uh, left hands have the irrigation with the chopper, it's an irrigating chopper. And from the hand, right hand side, you cut the sleeve and you keep the bare uh, uh, fecal tip without a sleeve and you do the job from the one side and you have to have some leaking of the incision and this is this some leak of the incision actually is not very fruitful during the surgery it's not welcomed by a lot of surgery but it functions and you have an incision of 1.7 or 1.8 maximum of, uh, uh, <coughs> of incision. as you can see the turbulence is uh, the, the the movement from one part to another is only in the direction of the ultrasound suction, not moving from the right to the hand side to the left hand side. And you go on doing the surgery and you finish it uh, as usual. But it, this is not really microfake because you still need uh, um, an irrigating headpiece which with a leaking uh, incision. And you have to have continuous irrigation from the assistant only to keep away the corneal burn. So there is a new technique for this, which is the pre-chop for uh, nucleus crack. You just insert a fork from one side, the right hand side, and the chopper or manipulator from the other side, and you crack the nucleus to half as if you are doing quick FECO, but without the FECO tip. And we can see it in this short video. You make two incisions, and in this case, you don't have to make it tight because you have full irrigation on the other side. After achieving a good, this is the instrument that you will use, the fork in the right-hand side. All people like me, we have started doing pick with the fork. And after good rotation of the nucleus, and you are sure that the nucleus is not stick to the epinucleus, or the cortex, and then you introduce the fork at 12 o'clock and the chopper at 6 o'clock. And both ends should meet and crack the nucleus into two parts, and you have it done. Then you move it 180 degrees, and you do the same to make it quarters. You do quarters by this. By making this, you have uh, introduced one step, and you don't have to have a chopper just an irrigation hand piece in your hand, left hand side. And you start having, and you can see the movement of the nucleus parts are getting easier to the phaco tip, the bare phaco tip, there is no sleeve and there is no irrigation. And it's moving more easily and more smoothly than inside the anterior chamber. 
and you, you don't need a chopping during the surgery. You just move, manipulate, and move. And you can use the irrigating handpiece just to help yourself by feeding the beast, feeding the feco, bare feco tip with the irrigating uh, <coughs> handpiece. In this moment, as you can see, it's, you are finishing the job. And the movement from the left hand side to the right hand side, so there is not a lot of turbulence inside the chill chamber. So, in order to cut some time because we are late, uh, I'll move forward and ask myself, what is the, what are the benefits or the com discomfort? Actually we're still slower and still the intraocular implantation with a viable IOL less than 1.8 incision is not very satisfactory. So by FECO time, the pre-chop techniques, there are a lot of pre-chop techniques, is getting better and better. However, maintaining the technique of by manuality is not welcomed by a lot of surgeons. And that's why we have to remind ourselves. In the 70s, we were operating that kind of cataract. In the 80s, brown and nuclear three. In the 90s, nuclear one and nuclear two. And nowadays, we are operating actually soft cataracts. And that's why a new technique has to arrive to serve this kind of patient because they are looking for better quality of vision, and they are already seeing very well. Thank you very much. Dr. Mahmoud, thank you very much. I will start uh, the first question. Uh, actually, the manual fecal emulsification was a hope, uh, I think, three years ago. What, what but, question, Dr. Mohammed, please? What? May I ask her a question, please? Yeah, yeah, okay, but... Okay, yes. okay, go ahead. You can complete. You can complete okay. what you have to do. Actually, the comment is that uh, 10 years ago, uh, bimanual FECO was uh, a very promising technique, but it vanished away. No one is using the bimanual FECO now. The problem was that instability of the anterior chamber. Number two, there is no available uh, intraocular lenses. Uh, rollable intraocular lenses was uh, devised at that time. Then it vanished away. And uh, the difference in the incision size was between 1.8 to, still we have 1.8 and 2.2 by axial, uh, coaxial FICO. And the other techniques is uh, still evolving. I mean, no, we need. Man. We don't need uh, 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 just uh, uh, intraocular lens. The the, um, the thesis of Ayman El Wahsh that I supervised about 15 years ago, it depended on the irrigating chopper. If you go now to the market, you won't find an irrigating chopper. There is no irrigating chopper to be, to buy nowadays. Because I bought, I bought a few of them, but I never used it. <laughs> because because it was very and not very welcome. Yeah. by the surgeons yeah. because the coaxial feco as you said have evolved but the concept we are looking for the concept not yeah. for the uh, we need a concept a new concept of yeah. how to move the irrigation from one side to the left hand side to the suction uh, emulsification to the right side and this is the new concept that we need it's not this technique because this technique, 15 years ago, yeah. we supervised a, a, a paper on it, we supervised a, a, a thesis on it, but it didn't progress. For sure. And as you, as you said, nowadays we still don't have reliable intraocular lens less than 1.8. So why, why do bother and do? Yes. The, why the, the, the question now is for Professor Shanfaudi and Dr. Rakish. Go ahead, please. please. Uh, have you noticed the corneal one or yeah, anything lost? Dr. Hisham first. Dr. Hisham is talking first. Yeah. No, it doesn't, uh, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Oh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, have you noticed the corneal burn and endothelial loss in this uh, technique? 
at, at the thesis of Dr. Ayman about 15 years ago, we compared coaxial FECO. At that time, it was not 2.4 like nowadays. It was yeah. 3.2, if you remember in that time. Okay. We compared the bimanuality with the 3.2 incision FECO tip. We yeah. found a significant importance of a difference in the endothelial cells. But was, it was the problem of the IOL at that time. You, ha you had to have a rollable IOL, and the rollable IOL disappeared. It was there. <laughs> it was there. Yeah. It was fun at that time to do a small incision, very tiny inc incision, 1.2, 1.4 incision. It was very temptative and very, uh, uh, let's say, uh, very temptative. Actually. Actually, it is very nice if you do a, a, a pediatric cataract using this technique to maintain the stability of the anterior chamber uh, without, because of the scleral rigidity. But nowadays, it's nonsense. Uh, Dr. Richem, go ahead. Professor. I, actually, um, I, I want to ask about the, uh, the wound size uh, of such a technique. When we started, it was 1.6, 1.8, because we were afraid about the corneal burn. Yeah. The corneal burn at that time, we didn't have a, a, a reproducible a tip to avoid the burn that happens. And, and my assistant has to have a very good irrigation uh, droplets on the, on the FECO because the burn is horrible. But when we shifted to the bimanuality, with the cracking technique, you do cracking. So you have uh, cut the, th the emulsification time, <clears throat> the FECO time by half. You did have, you have cracked the nucleus to four parts and you just, you don't need a, a, a chopper. You just, with the irrigation, you manipulate inside the anterior chamber and you do the job. Still you have time. Anybody is asking yet? Uh, uh, two, three uh, millimeters for this uh, technique. Because now, uh, now the wound is uh, 2.2. Yeah. 2.2, 2.4 maximum. Yeah. Okay, 2.2, so. 2.2. 2. 2. 2, uh, 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 more safe, and there is uh, 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 IOL uh, uh, suitable through this incision, and the the use of chopper in second hand is. Uh, always uh, counter action and always helpful and it may uh, you may face something um, um, uh, okay uh, the second hand uh, should be ready to assist the but in this uh, bimanual technique uh, you uh, you use both hands for fecal emulsification and you cannot uh, you cannot uh, uh, help or to assist any uh, uh, any hazards can may be done and as you see, the, the, the rocking effect during the right hand, uh, during uh, uh, FECO and during the sculpting, you are rocking the lens. And uh, as you know, mo most of uh, old people has the, the neuropathies uh, may maybe uh, uh, cannot afford this uh, rocking uh, power. You mean the pre-chopping? Yes. In the pre-chopping, if you do, if you uh, if you do it in the right way, from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock, actually it's very you, you master it in in in, uh, in 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 no time. But the problem is, uh, why are we doing yes by manual exactly. exactly. If this we do push. it to in a small to have a smaller incision, this is nonsense because we don't have an IOL for it. So exactly. why we are training ourselves for bimanuality? For yes. one reason, for, because 25 or 30 years ago, when we used to implant six and a half, six millimeter, at that time it was 6.5 millimeter, because Indeed. the PMMA at that time was 6.5 millimeter. We never thought that in one day that we will do a, a FACO through 2.4 and implant an intraocular lens. So, this might be now, but in, in a few time you will have everybody, we know that by now we have the preloaded IOLs, are, they are in the market now, yeah. But uh, the preloaded IOLs will never stop like preloaded IOLs. They will come in a smaller uh, injectors. injectors and uh, tips. I think there is some, some 
some of our colleagues are asking, uh, Dr. Ala uh, Izzawawi is uh, asking something. Please, Dr. Ala, make a comment. Yes, please. Uh, good evening. Professor Ala, yes, hello, Menawar, Menawar. Welcome, Dr. Ala. Very nice to have you. Most of the questions have been answered by Dr. Mahmoud and others. Actually, there is two issues. We were aiming at that time to getting smaller and smaller incision. And I want to remember everybody that wounds under 2.64 are astigmatically neutral. So there is no value of getting down to 1.8 or less or less. Exactly. Actually, in the astigmatism, there is no value of getting smaller exactly. than we are doing 2.2 or 2.4. This is one issue. The other issue has been told by my colleagues, especially Mahmoud, that there is no IOL up till now, good IOL, that can be inserted through 1.8. The role of the IOL has been vanished because they are not good, because of the, once there is fibrosis of the posterior capsule, there is a very big problem with these rollable IOLs. And up till now, the only incisions that are capable of inserting through it a very good IOL are at least 2.2. Uh, actually, I am working through 2.4 because I am not seeing uh, an, any advantage of getting smaller and smaller. Regarding the point of fluidics that Dr. Mahmoud has raised, the fluidics uh, in the new machines are extremely good, that the flowability and the holdability are so excellent that uh, we are not seeing the main problem of uh, the contradiction between the irrigation and the aspiration through the fecal tip, actually. And that's why this technique has been vanished up till now. But still, the idea of Dr. Mahmoud of getting through that, yes, maybe there is a new idea through it. But uh, why this technique has not been, is not alive nowadays, there is no need for it. With the new machines, with the new techniques, actually, we are performing uh, a good job. And uh, not, always notice that the IOL technology is a step behind the FECO technology. Yes. FECO can be done through 1.8, but the I, a good IOL cannot be inserted through exactly. less than 2.2. That's why, uh, Professor Ala, the irrigating chopper disappeared from the market. Yes. If you yes. go to find, uh, you remember when we used to buy yes. irrigating choppers, and of course, there is no irrigating chopper anymore because nobody is asking for it. Yes. Yes. And as you said, it's... there is well, two issues. <laughs> Uh, the two issues that you have raised is the conclusion we talk. We have to admit that 2.4 is the most comfortable uh, yes. incision uh, at the end of the surgery because this is the, uh, you, you implant while you are very comfortable and you have a variety, a hell of a variety of intraocular lenses to implant. You, yes. you don't have to stick yes. to one kind of an intraocular lens. Yes. But and as you said, the fluidics 15 years ago is diff different, completely different yes. from now. When we started this thesis 15 years ago, it had a point. But now I am raising the issue because there is no more fl techniques in FECO. You have been doing the FECO, uh, Professor Ala, one of the very, as you, let me introduce you to Dr. Rakesh, Professor Ala from Alexandra University is one of the, the prime uh, FECO uh, uh, surgeons in our country and um, do you imagine that I made a session of FEMTO FECO especially for him and <laughs> Allah yikha lika, Mahmoud. Allah yikha lika. I invented a FECO <laughs> <laughs> after a, a, a long discussion with him he said no we have to uh, uh, present a new in spite that we are not 100% convinced but let me make me a, a session in the the, uh, the ophthalmological society of Egypt, yes, especially I remember. Of, you remember, I remember that, right? Mahmoud, because yes. we have to. Disc there is no more techniques. We don't have yes. a new techniques, so we have to find something new. And this is by the hands of, of, of prime surgeons like Professor Alia. He's one of the of our idols here in Egypt. Thank you. I think we have. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Professor Alia. Thank you. Your, Thank you. You are very welcome every time you come. Thank, uh, you. Thank, you Thank, you. Thank you. Thank very you very much. Thank you. Very nice discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Ala, you are welcome. We need you Thank to... Thank you very much. Your ideas. Thank you very much.
Rami Saleh is asking if the main incision corneal worm uh, can happen. Yes, at the beginning it happened with Mia Rami. This is just a question now because he's from the corona part now. Ah, oh, he's the corona part from Egypt. <laughs> I think we have enough, and I let the, the word Mr. for uh, Mahmoud, we have the, one, one the, colleague the last one. one to ask. Yeah, the last yeah, one. I called can. Galaxy Note 8. You can Hi, go. Alaikum. Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Who? Last question. Who is with us? Please, the name Galaxy Note 8. You can you go ahead for your question. I'm sorry, Doctor Mahmoud. تفضل يا فندم. معاك دكتور عبد الرحمن جابر يا بيه. اهلا دكتور عبد الرحمن بيه اهلا وسهلا اتفضل. ازيك يا دكتور عبد الرحمن بيه استاذ في جامعه عين شمس وما غني عن التعريف اتفضل يا دكتور عبد الرحمن بيه. الله يبارك بقول لحضرتك مع كل الفتره دي اهلا ازيك يا بيه ازي سعادتك ايه اخبارك ايه؟ اتفضل. بقول بقول لحضرتك مع كل الفتره دي هو حضرتك دلوقتي في العدسات اللي ما ما اخترعوش عدسه تخش بالسايز الصغير ده. مع ان هم اخترعوا عدسات زي الاي سي اللي بتقدر تخش من الحجم الصغير يعني طب ليه ما يقدروش يعملوا حاجه زيها كده تبقى كانها تتحط برضه تبقى زي الاي سي ال نفس الفكره يعني في حاجه زي كده. اي دو هاف ذا دريم يا دكتور عبد الرحمن انا الحلم ده عندي من ساعه لما انا اشرفت على ايمن الوحش زمان الحقيقه بقى لنا 10 سنين بنعمل نفس التكنيك وبنحط تقريبا نفس العدسات 10 years وي هاف بين وي ديدنت موف اني ثينج زي ما الدكتور علاء الزاويه كان بيقول احنا بقى لنا 10 سنين بنعمل نفس الحكايه. There is no news. No. فهل احنا وصلنا خلاص للبوينت بريك؟ I don't think so because the technology is moving and the, the companies will, net, will never let you sleep at peace with the money. They will take the money from you by anyhow. The company. They will find a way to take money from you. So if they don't invent a new, a new technique, a new intraocular legs, like, like you said, uh, I think they, they have the way to do it, but the rollable IRL disappeared. يعني أنت لا تتخيل الصعوبة أيامها عشان rollable IRL دي كانت غالية جدا كانت بتخش من 1.4 مليمتر. تمام تمام. وفيها وكانت جميلة جدا أنت لو شوف الانس... أنت ما بتعرفش تشوف الانسيشن بعد العملية ما بتعرفش مكانه يا دكتور عبد الرحمن. تمام تمام. شكرا لسيادتك. كان كان أسئلة كثيرة جدا اتفضل يا فندم. محمود بعد إذنك حضرتك خلاص كومنت. اعتقد ان الاي بي سي ال والاي سي ال حتى اللي هي بتاعت ستارت ستيل يو نيد لارجر انسيزن ذان 2.2 ايفن اه يا سو ات از نوت ذا انفنشن واز تو ميك ات كومباتبل وذ ذا بليسمنت ان ذا بوستيريو تشامبر بات ات از نوت ذا بروبلم وذ ذا رولبل اي ويل واز ذات ات جوت ستيكي تو ايتش اذر اند ا لوت اوف بروبلمز وين يو ار فينيشد and the major advances, advances that had happened to the FACO is the advancement in the fluidic and stability of the anterior chamber, which made the FACO surgery safer. So that's why we are not thinking that much to go lower than the 2.2 .2 incision, which makes the surgery very safe. Can I, can I ask a question, Dr. Ahmoud? Please. <laughs> Okay, okay. okay. We, I, I will take from the end of other questions about the, the corneal burn. If, if, you, if you had a corneal burn in, 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 a, in a case, after, at the end of the surgery, you will leave the wound or do something for it? I think the, the wound will be fish mouth. There is fish if, mouthing. If, so corneal if corneal burn happens? Yeah. If corneal, happen, if corneal burn happens, you have to take the suture. Uh, radial ra radial suture or circumferential one? لا 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 radial عادي. Radial. لا لا. Okay. But يعني uh, I I don't I don't recall if I did it once or twice. I don't recall that I did it ever. Yeah. Oh, okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Now I will. It's my turn to present. I will share my screen. Okay. I will start my talk. Thank you, Dr. Mahmoud. Thank you, Rish. You have just 15 minutes, Dr. Mahmoud. No, everyone has time <laughs> now. I will. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Go, go, go ahead, sir. Yeah, I'm. I'm sharing my screen right now. Uh, I'm going to talk about. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about. Uh, my presentation in challenging cases now is 
uh, about, I will present three cases. The case number one is a case of pediatric cataract surgery. The problem that we had in cataract surgery is how are you going to tackle the problem and to go through a safe surgery? Yeah, number yeah. one, Stabilis your screen, Muhammad, your Muhammad screen is not. Screen. I can't yeah. detect yeah. your screen, yeah. Dr. Muhammad. Uh, okay, I will share. Uh, sorry. Oh, okay. You started sharing, but not yet. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's shared now. I think. It, it, no, it, it's not apparent not to, yet, to us. Not yet. It's not shared it's with us. We will wait. It is it is internet problem because I, I, I am shared is. Uh, Try again. Uh, new share. <clears throat> okay. We also didn't see your video, Dr. Muhammad. Uh, just a moment. Okay, you can stop share and reshare again. Stop share. Okay. I will stop the share. Uh, no, I'm seeing now, Dr. Eheb, not your screen. Just a moment. Now I'm sharing. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You got no, my not, yet. not not yet. First, you open in the desktop, then share it. What? Yeah, yeah. The desktop first. Uh, open your desktop. Yeah. Then share it. I will put share again. Now it's stopped. I will share uh, this one. Is it shared now? No. Not no. yet. What is the problem now? Uh, okay. Even we, 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 we don't see your video. Uh, you are not seeing me? Yeah. Yes. yes. Really? Yes. Yes. Okay. Sing, you, sing you by our hearts, just. I swear, Allah. <laughs> I, I, where is the? Uh, where is the? <laughs> I will see. Uh, I share. Uh, share what? Uh, what are the problem now? It's. Uh, I will stop sharing now. I stopped it. I am seeing all of you now. You see? Do you see me now? No. Really? It's yes. <coughs> 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 open in the desktop, then share it. <coughs> Dr. No. Rakesh, say, say to no. you, open the desktop and then share it. But actually, we don't see even your, your, uh, your video. I, 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 have to, I have to look in again to admit. Yeah, may okay. I share my presentation? Uh, yes. We, we may yes. turn to Dr. Abdul Magid, yes. Yes, yes. Allow yes. me to share my presentation, sir? Yes, yes. Do you, do you hear me now? Yes, I hear you. Yeah, but what is the problem you now? It's, 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 can, can I begin to start? You don't make a start video. I have no problem. Uh, I, 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 yeah, Abdel Magid can start now, then I will uh, yes. complete after. No problem. Yes, start with Abdel Magid. I will get out, then I go back. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Well, start Abdel. with Abdel Magid. Assalamu yeah. alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Share, share your screen, please, Abdel Magid. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Would you please share your screen, Abdel Magid? Welcome, everybody. Okay, 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 okay we, welcome we, Rakesh, welcome all audience. You see my screen now? No, no, not yet. It will arrive soon. Hope. Okay, hoping for that. Started or not? Not. First you open in the desktop, then select it. I select my I select my presentation and I see in the full screen now. No, did you select no. from the screen uh, or uh, from your PowerPoint? From PowerPoint? No, the, the, no, no, no. Can no. choose from the screen. <clears throat> okay. The Zoom screen. Start sharing from, from the, the green button. 
Uh, I, I started, not, chair, I yeah. started, Dr. Hussain. Yes, okay. But uh, you, ha you, ha you have started, but not yet. It's you not, see? No. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. You see, Afanim? I can see you, but I cannot see the screen. <laughs> okay, I'll start to share once again. Yeah. Okay. افتح الباوربوينت الكلام الجديد الاول وبعدين شير سكرين وبعدين اختارها من السكرين اي ثينك يور برزنتيشن شود بي ان ذا ديسك توب فيرست اند ذن اوبن ات اند ذن شير ثرو ذا سكرين يس دكتور مجيد Are you ready, Dr. Hussam? Uh, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> I, I, I hope for my screen to be shared. Okay. Uh, Dr. Mahmoud. Dr. Mahmoud, uh, to, to wait for can post? We, can we, can you start uh, then? Uh, Dr. Mahmoud, can we start with Dr. Hussam Ziada if he's ready? But, and then but, you can complete but, with but Dr. Mahmoud. But Dr. Abmagid is okay now. Yeah, I, I can see the, uh, his video. I can see you, Dr. Abmagid. Open your presentation on the desktop. I opened it. Then it's I mean, share, I mean, sure. share, share, share screen. Yeah. Yeah. Share screen from the, the Zoom uh, screen itself. Okay, Dr. Magid. Share, uh, open the presentation. I open the presentation, uh, and put it on the side in the desktop itself, and okay. then then press share screen. You will get a, a large window, including the desktop. Okay. Press on it. Click it. I made I make it, I made it many times. Okay. I'll try again. Okay. okay. Yes. And select your screen. Okay. Yeah, you, 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 yeah, yes. now, now it's okay. Yes. Now you have it. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, and yes. press okay. on the full screen and you can start now. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Full, full screen, yes. Okay. Uh, you see me now? Yes. 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 Okay. I have two presentations, but if the time not allowing, I reduce it to one presentation. Start, the start. title of my presentation, when situation go unhappy. Okay, there is a case of male boy, 14 years old, complaining of dimness of vision, diminution of vision, with high myopic astigmatism, both eyes, left eye more than right eye, refraction was minus eight, with minus 5.5 .5 cylinder at axe 175, left eye, and less complain in the right eye. He has Vilzi Marchizani syndrome. This is the photo of dilated pupil showing about th from three to six hours subluxation, which means a moderate subluxation. How can I think in such case? Uh, as uh, Professor Rakesh and uh, Dr. Hisham, Dr. Mahmoud uh, expressed in previous lectures, I think about making in a smaller, a small uh, capsular axis, insertion of capsular hooks, making FECO, insertion of CTR and then implantation in the bag full WL oil. The plan was as follows, small rexes, capsular hooks, FACO, capsular tension, insertion, capsular tension ring, insertion with one point uh, scleral fixation of the CTR and in the bag foldable eye oil insertion. But as we see in the video, <clears throat> this is the case. First of all, I try to fashion the scleral flap underneath, under which I will insert my scleral fixation point. Fashioning it with a, with a sharp uh, crescent knife.
It was at the six o'clock. <laughs> Then I do many side ports to be ready to insert the capsular hooks. This elastic solution injection. You follow? Yes, there is some delay in the video uh, display, but yeah. it's okay. If you allow me, I may play the movie outside PowerPoint, but it will, it will, it will take some time. It is different. It is not different because it's a matter of the internet itself. I think your presentation is stopped and share the video again. Again, Rakesh? <clears throat> Actually, we just uh, actually stop your PPT. Okay. Okay. Go to your PPT, then you share the video again from the desktop. I'll try, but it will take some time. Okay, I started now to make a small rexes. As yeah. we know, all of us, there is many factors affecting the elasticity and the tension of the anterior capsule in such a case of subluxation. I'm intending to, at, at first to make uh -huh. small rectus and, and it will go very well till the last end. Try to invert the flap. Yes. You follow? Yes. Okay. Everything is okay? Oh, it's going. Slow. It's, going. it's, it's slow but going. Okay. Go. Okay. Here, here I made, I tried to make a small rexes, but at the extreme end of rexes, as we notice, there is tendency to extend tendency to extend at the equator at this point you see yes <laughs> and suddenly i find that the the rex is extended to the extreme equator of subluxation you notice <clears throat> At the end of rexes, I find myself with this situation. Here, I'll stop to show. Here, there is the edge of rexes coming all through till, sorry. I'll try to run the video again. Actually, when you PPT, actually total From. PPT is removed and shared the video separately. Yes. Allow me to share the video separately. To, to get the extreme end of the video? Yeah. Okay, PowerPoint should be closed. And you actually you just put the video on the desktop. Okay. Okay. And then uh, share it. Actually, PowerPoint should be closed. Okay. Okay. And then uh, copy the video on the desktop. Okay. And then share it again. <clears throat> 
You see it? Okay, we, we see the we, we, we I can see the window now. Oh, this is a window video? Take, take it, no, no, take it on I, the desktop. Take it on the desktop. Copy, copy to desktop. Did you copy the video to the desktop? Okay. Yes. Is the video appearing? Yeah. Okay. It's okay now. Okay. Go ahead. Hey, hey, hey! I finished in the in the in the in the in the late rexes. The rexes extended to the equator of the lens at the area of subluxation. Okay. So I inserted the hooks. Capsular hooks. This is the first hook hooking the anterior capsule. And uh, inserted the three hooks as much as I could. And doing irrigation aspiration as the lens was very soft. Okay, as you see. And this is the extreme cortex to be aspirated. Okay. This is the situation I faced. Anterior rexes, equator. This is the anterior vitreous face. And I have no angle or shelf of the anterior capsule to insert the capsular tension ring. So what can I do? If I insert a capsular tension ring, even with, even with one point scalar fixation, it will be adhered to sparse plana, not extending the capsule, and always there is gap which may allow the uh, intraocular lens to drop down into the vitreous. Okay? So I blend, I, I have plan B. I have a plan B, what can I do? So I thought about inserting a BMMA IOL using the same idea of one point scleral fixation. Okay? This is the uh, double needle uh, bare back uh, entered from uh, the flap of the sclera I made and uh, making a loop of the brulein to anchor and hook the lower haptic of BMMA IOL. I widen the wound to allow insertion of a BMMA IOL, which is tied in the loop of bare back using the lower haptic as CTR itself. Okay, this is IOL implanted, lower part attached with the bare back and the upper part in the bag, upper haptic. Finally, I close the wound with shoelace suture, removing the hooks. Now, return back. You see the presentation again? Uh, not yet. Now? Share it again. Is the presentation appearing on you? No, not yet. No, close the video. Close the video. Close, close the video. Close the video first. Okay. okay. And open the presentation and then share screen. Okay. OK. 
¿Qué? ¿Sí? A waiting for. You see? No. <clears throat> Uh, not yet, Dr. McGill. Please try again. Like that? Yeah. Yeah, nice. Nice? Yeah, yeah skip. This is, okay, okay. And this is video. You see it? Post operative video for the eye on the set lamp, as you see. Pupil will appear okay. rounded, rounded. Central, regular, okay? Perfect. And this is the post-operative results. And then the uh, post-operative result of this patient uh, was very satisfactory. <coughs> Refraction was minus one, um, with minus 1.75 cylinder at X15. Uh, and the patient was satisfied. Here, the message in this case, uh, you, sh you should have plan A, which is CTR, B, which implantation of PMMA IOL uh, as a CTR with lower haptic. And even plan C, if you, if you can't do that, you should be ready with a scalar fixation IOL. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. McGee, for this great presentation. Thank you, Dr. Good Thank you. Good Thank you Dr. McGee. Thank you, Dr. McGee. Thank you, Dr. McGee. Dr. Mohammed Abdelmanim is gone. Is gone away. Can you proceed, Dr. Hussain, please? Please, Fandim. There is questions for Dr. Abdelmanim first. If if anyone wants to to ask. Yes, Mr. Rakish. Yeah. Dr. Rakish. Dr. Rakish. Okay. Okay. What is your follow-up time? What the follow-up? What? Uh, the follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up, follow, follow up time. Uh, I followed the patient for three months. Three months. Actually, yes. in this type of cases, after the few bunny year, the lens uh, capsule become contacted. So sometimes uh, they are the the they comes in the pupillary area. Uh, I, I, the the lower haptic is uh, is tied with the proline suture, and the upper haptic is inserted in the bag. Okay. In the upper bag. And even and even if there is contraction, I think it may be semi-central will not be captured in the iris. Okay. There is another question, Dr. Mahmoud, uh, please. Uh, there is another question from Dr. Asayed El Tilbani. In cases of congenital decentered lens, it's better to depend on scleral fixation IL, as the bag uh, in, the, in in such case. Okay. As the, in the, as, the in the, as the in bag IOL can they be decentered, or what's your opinion? Uh, of course, of course, it, uh, the disintegration is uh, probable, but uh, in, a, in a very young child, if you try to implant a scleral fixation IOL, and the, then 10 years later, 20 years later, you may face an epidemic of dislocated sclerally fixated ION. Yeah, okay, but uh, but I, I think there's no uh, need for the bag in such case because the accommodation will be lost anyway. But it's more, more physiological, Dr. Hussain. Okay, so thank you very much. Dr. Mahmoud, Dr. Hisham. It's okay, it's very uh, good job, Dr. Amigid. Thanks, Dr. Hisham. Dr. Mohammed Abmanam is now with us. Uh, okay. Mohammed, you can share your screen. Uh, okay, now, uh, uh, just a moment. Uh, uh, I, I put everything down back. Alhamdulillah, salam ya bish. Allah yasalamak. Mahu da al-adiyan. Okay, now... Uh, please mute. mute. <laughs> please, please mute, 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 mute. The, the baby, the baby, the baby host. Please mute your phone. Now, uh, can you see my screen now? Yes. Online is, 
يا محمد 20 دقيقة فاضلين على الساعة 9 عشان عندك ميتنج تاني ما تنساش طيب تمام هنفتح بس الأول شوف الدنيا إيه تمام Okay. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Thank you very much. What I'm going to present now, I'm going to present few cases. The first case is a pediatric cataract case in a child three years old. Uh, the problem that to be tackled is very important. Is it clear the voice and the videos? Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, we are looking. We are looking for yes. stability in the chamber and. We have to consider the scleral rigidity that the eye is so soft in these children. Centration of the eye and depth of the anterior and depth of general anesthesia. Because if you don't have enough depth of general anesthesia, uh, the patient eye will be rolled up. Uh, elasticity of the anterior capsule, visualization of the capsule during grexis, whether anterior or posterior, tips during capsulorexis to be tackled, how to do posterior capsulorexis and to prevent posterior capsular rupture, uh, posterior capsular opacification, sorry and uh, whether to hydrate or suture the entries after surgery. Here is the case I'm going to present. I will start it now. Here's the video. You see the eye is soft. I'm going to uh, make a small entry into the anterior chamber in order not to give a chance for the viscoelastic to escape. Then I stain the capsule with trepan blue, and you can see that the pupil is getting in and out, zooming in and out during surgery. Then I will start the capsule rexis. I start with the cystotome. Then I will use the rexis forceps. And I, t I will try to keep it as central as possible. And you could see now that it's trying to escape outside. That's because of the eye soft and the the viscoelastic is continuously escaping through the wound. And what, if the anterior, the, the anterior capsule is not flat, it tends to go towards the periphery. So while I'm going to bring it towards the center, it's escaping a little bit towards the periphery. That's why I will get out, then I will refill the anterior chamber with viscoelastic again in order to complete this step. As you can see here, Okay, I refill the anterior chamber. You can see that because the viscoelastic is getting out of the eye. I used a small wound and I used a cohesive viscoelastic and not a dispersive one because this dispersive one will be out of the eye faster than the cohesive one. And it's better, of course, to use a halo GV if you have it. But now it is going to be completed. Now the anterior rexis is finished. Then I'm going to do a small sideboards, then to do by manual uh, IA because uh, after hydro dissection, then I remove the lens material completely, as you can see. After completion of the irrigation aspiration and removal of the cortical material, once I get outside the eye, as you can see here, you see that the focus is lost because of the eye is soft and the anterior, the, the, the eye collapses because that's why I'm considering the sclerosis. No, I inject uh, air, to then I inject a trepan blue in order to stain the posterior capsule. And then I remove the, uh, the fluid. And this is a remnant of the opacified part of the lens. I will aspirate it with the viscoelastic cannula. Of course, we have to use a wide one. Uh, then, once I completed removing this uh, part of the uh, opacified lens, I will start to do the posterior rexis. The most important is to do a posterior rexis without disruption of the anterior vitreous phase. How to do it? Uh, number one, to better visualize the posterior capsule after staining and to use the idea of the vitro-retinal surgeon just to make a very, very little tiny, tiny tip of the uh, insulin needle just to scratch the posterior capsule to reach an edge 
And once I reach an edge here, you see that the posterior capsule is completely elastic. When I created an edge, as you can see here, I'm in here, I'm inserting uh, the cannula of the viscoelastic, then insert the cannula through the posterior holes that are created. I inject the viscoelastic behind the posterior lens capsule to separate it from the uh, anterior vitreous phase. To keep the anterior vitreous phase as intact as possible as much as we can, then I will try to use the, the vitreoretinal surgeon's forceps to create the posterior rexus as you could see here. And it is very elastic and it is not coming. You should try to see where is it going and to go with it and to make it smaller as possible than the, uh, the anterior one. You could see here, it is going, 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 the posterior rexus. Now the anterior vitreous face is intact. No vitreous escape to the uh, posterior chamber. Now the posterior rexus is completed. And then I do a, a, a little anterior vitrectomy to clean it up. Then I in, uh, inject a viscoelastic to fill the bag, then fill the anterior chamber, then I insert the IOL inside the bag. Actually, I should have bought a three piece IOL and to tuck it into the posterior, cap the posterior capsule opening, but I don't have it at that time. That's why I inserted the, the uh, single piece one inside the bag and to keep it completely central, as you can see here, and you see the edges of the posterior capsule, then the edges of the anterior capsule, and I usually have to suture the wounds because the wounds will not close well in children, especially in, we are working in this doughy eye, as you can see here, then I will keep the eye after removal of the viscoelastic on air. Then I remove the viscoelastic, close the wound and hydrate the wound and suture the all entries in pediatric cataract cases or any cyborg in pediatric surgery should be closed. Okay, this is the first case. The second case is a case of traumatized subluxated lens with anterior vitreous prolapse and iris dialysis with secondary glaucoma. What is the problem? Are you going to face, if you have a case of traumatic lens subluxation, anterior vitreous prolapse, glaucoma, secondary to these problems with dialyzed iris? How are you going to tackle the, uh, this issue uh, to have a patient to go uh, through a safe surgery? We have Four problems, iris dialysis, anterior vitreous prolapse, secondary glaucoma, subluxated lens. Are you going to hydrodissect the, this case of cataract without prior knowledge about the posterior capsule? Is it intact or ruptured? Are you going to insert a capsule tension ring and when? Now we can see through the video. I tackled this case in this way. Number one, I, I took the decision that this is a secondary uh, glaucoma to vitreous prolapse into the anterior chamber. And I propose that once I remove the vitreous prolapse from the anterior chamber, the secondary glaucoma will disappear. And I wait for the manage subsequent management of glaucoma according to the results of the first surgery. Now I'm creating two flaps. We then uh, I am using sideboard to first suture the iris using a straight needle, thin or nylon. I will use two stitches here, as you can see here. We have to go through this board and go out beneath the flap. Then once I finish this one, I will close the flaps using the same needle. This is the first one, the first bus. Then I will use another bus. Then I'm always injecting a viscoelastic, especially uh, here on GV. This is the second pass of the same needle, uh, of, uh, of another needle, sure. So I have to got two bags, 
of uh, uh, straight with two straight needles. I'm using, I'm completing the other stitch. Then when I finish this one, I will start to tackle the problem of the anterior prolapsed vitreous. I'm using the same needle to suture the flaps of the, uh, of the uh, sclera into the bed. Then I will close the conjunctiva and always I am keeping the anterior chamber as close as possible and tamponaded with vitreous. Here there's some mistakes in the editing because this one I'm injecting the trepan blue to stain the anterior capsule. Then I'm injecting the, uh, the triamcin loan to stain the prolapsed anterior vitreous. Then I'm doing the anterior vitrectomy and then I repeat. I'm repeating the, uh, the staining with the triamcin loan as much as we can to, uh, to till I completely cleared out the prolapsed vitreous from the anterior chamber. Then I fill the anterior chamber. I start doing the capsule rexus in the usual way. Here I have a subluxated lens here. As you can see, the wrinkles of the capsule. One, two, three. This is well. I started doing the rexus using the rexus forceps in a circ circumlinear fashion. As you could see here, this is the folds because there's no counter traction force here. And you should consider that in the traumatized eyes, there's a little inflammation. You could see here that the anterior capsule is not going to cut. That's why I'm using the curved vitre scissor to cut the anterior capsule, especially the fibrotic part here. Then I continued the rexus completely in a circular fashion, as you can see here. Once I completed the rexus, I will insert a, a capsule hooks, as you can see here, to support the capsular bag, not to be displaced or to make, then I will do a little hydro dissection. Uh, not too much because I'm not sure what are going to happen and what is the status of the posterior capsule. Then I am trying to uh, remove the uh, capsule hooks and to mobilize it into different position to completely stabilize the capsular bag. Then I removed the, the uh, lens material using IA cannulas here after doing the uh, FACO. Then I'm inserting the capsule tension ring now. I, actually, I decided not to insert the capsule tension ring prior to this because I don't know exactly what is the status of the posterior chamber, if the, uh, of the posterior capsule. If the posterior capsule is ruptured and you are inserting the uh, capsule tension ring, it will, go, it will go completely posteriorly and it will further damage the posterior capsule. That's why as long as I'm keeping the status of the eye stabilized, I insert the capsule tension ring into place in order to support the capsule bag not more than I inserted the IOL and removed the hook and this is the case at the end. This is the case at the end, then I removed the capsule. Actually, this was a driver from Ben Swift and I think it was six, 12, I was amazed from the result. I don't know exactly why, but he is lucky more than enough. This is the case number two. The case number three, which is a uh, posterior capsule hole during scalp. You have to have an eagle's eye if you are doing FACO, otherwise you will mess up the case. This was a completely straightforward case. And here I'm always staining all the capsules since I went to India in 2006. I stain all the capsules, whether clear or not clear. Okay, I start usually with the capsule, uh, with, the, uh, with the needle. And they do it, as you could see here, and then it is completed in the normal fashion and finished. Then I do the two sideboard hydro dissection. Uh, if, if, if we notice here this hydro dissection, 
usually if I see this wave, the wave is not completed posteriorly. I, I kept a little skeptical. I'm not going to rotate the lens nucleus in these cases. And, and it was soft. Then uh, I started the FACO, but I kept my eye on the cir circumstances and the, what is going on. Here I'm doing clear up some of the anterior uh, cortex. Then I do uh, cruciate incision, as you can see during the sculpt. And you know, watch this one here later on because something will happen here. Yeah, you see, I start to see that this area of the posterior capsule is shining and lighting more than enough. That's why I kept in my mind that the posterior capsule has something wrong in this case. And then I completed the FACO, but after readjusting of the fluidics, decreasing the height of the, the uh, irrigation and the minimizing the turbulence of fluid, then I rotated the nucleus, then I divided the nucleus into half again, then into quadrant, then I removed its quadrant. And during the removal of the different, the last quadrant, you see here, this is a, what is happening here. You see, I, I notice here what I saw during the scalp period. Here, here is the area of the deficit in the posterior capsule. I re-injected the viscoelastic, you see, here is the hole. The idea here is to keep this hole as small as possible, remove the, 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 the cortex. You should remove the cortex away from this area and complete the pushing the vitreous and the anything backward into its place. Here, I didn't do any idle section. You could see that some of the fluid lens material escaped into the vitreous little bit, but here is the hole, as you can see here by again, then I am completing the removal of the cortex with the by manual IA. But before getting out in order not to let this hole to get wide and to minimize the turbulence in the two chamber, before getting out of the eye, I inject viscoelastic as you could see here, keep the irrigation on till you fin finish the injection of the viscoelastic to make the capsule stretch it, then I remove this little part with dry aspiration using the cannula of the uh, missile, which has a wider board, as you could see here. I am removing it manually. Then I inserted the IOL inside the bag, rotated it into position, as you could see here, then I removed the viscoelastic after removal of any knuckle of vitreous that could have been prolapsed anteriorly at any time, then closing the eye and tamponading the eye with uh, air at the end of surgery, in this case. Because I'm doing the anterior vitrectomy, injecting air, then hydration of the wound, and this is the end of the surgery. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Now I'm finished. Thank you. Very good sir. job, Dr. Muhammad. Thank you very much, Dr. Shambish. Okay. Uh, may I ask a question? Yes. yes. Stop sharing, yeah, Dr. Muhammad. Stop sharing. Stop sharing? Yes. Okay, uh, stop sharing. We have... Yeah. Yeah, who's going? Very good job, Dr. Muhammad. Thank you very much, thank you. So, Sham, can I ask Al-Haga? Yes, please. Uh, oh. In the first case, uh, you did uh, perfect uh, posterior capsule access. But yeah. the question is, being you have uh, anterior, being you have, being uh, you have uh, uh, <clears throat> retractor or uh, oculotome, uh, you clean the anterior chamber, it, it is easier to create this uh, posterior um, capsulotomy, uh, circular and rounded, uh, using the suction force and the cutting, the slow cutting force, 
of the vitrector. I mean, it could be created easily. Uh, uh, look, I, 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 I took the decision to separate the anterior vitreous phase from the posterior capsule in the way that I did in this video. Then I finalized doing a good rexus uh, to guarantee that it is circular and it is of the exact size I want. Because in such a cases, if you have the three piece IRL and you are going to tuck it, you need it size, sized well and very circular. If you have an oculotome, it will never be as, as good circular as you could see here if you did it well with the uh, forceps. Okay, Mohammed, you have some questions on the chat. You can read it. Uh, in the chat, yeah. I will. Uh, we have to be uh, Hari and Hamad because we have another meeting, you remember? Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, pediatric cataract, I don't know. The post capsule cannot, can't we do it by the usual capsule excess forceps or vitus cutter? You can do it anyway, but here I am, so I can and I think you could do the posterior rexus in any way with this. Uh, rexus forceps with the uh, cystotome or with the oculotome, with the oculotome, no problem. You can do it anyway. Why no anterior vitrectomy in pediatric glaucoma? Pediatric no. cataract. Somebody, Henry Safat is writing in pediatric glaucoma. In no, it is not. It is, she wrote in pediatric glaucoma. I don't say that. No, we have to do anterior vitrectomy, limited anterior vitrectomy. This is what I did. Dr. Mohamed Abbasit, your question? Assalamu <laughs> السؤال تاني عباسة لو حصل extension during the posterior capsorexes what will we do هن هل هنكمل عادي خالص من limb rexes عادي ونزرع برضو full double ولا ساعتها decision هيضيع سمعيني سمعيني ولا اوكي لا لا كنت محمد اتفضل بي في اي سؤال تاني ولا في حاجة تانية دكتور عبد الباسة بيسأل لو if there is if there is an extension of the posterior capsorexes what could what could you do if if uh, if, if this happened? Will, will you come? Would you complete to implant the IL in back, uh, or you will or you will shift your mind? You shouldn't implant uh, IL inside the bag except if you have enough stable posterior capsule. If you have a stable posterior capsule, and you are sure that you will put it without displacement, without even subluxation or dislocation. You could do it. Otherwise, you could do sulcus placement. But in pediatric cataract cases, <clears throat> the most important is to keep it inside the bag because there's no guarantee what's going to happen from uveitis, inflammation, yes. what's okay. going to happen in the future. Sure. Uh, may I comment, Dr. Mohammed? Fadl. So, I'll try to the hospital extension in the posterior capsule during the capsule access. طبعا المانجمنت على حسب الـ 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 الديستنس او الدامج او السيرو ريكسز اكستنشن اللي حصل لو هو ليميتد انت هتحاول تخليه سيركلر ثاني وتحوله ريك صحيح ذا بيست نعم ذا بيست از تو كيب ات سيركلر يس نو اي مين ات كود بي وايدند بس تو كيب ات سيركلر اف اكستنشن هابند it could be you can uh, you can extend your rexes uh, 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 in larger size, but you keep it circular. And then you can apply the three pieces uh, Acusof IOL uh, implanted in the sulcus, and you can do optic capture through yeah. the through the bag. This this. Uh, uh,
Laps will widen the posterior axis. Every time you go, you go in and out from inside the eye, the eye collapses, the vitreous will collapse more, and you will get more widening and disturbance in the posterior capsule. That's why if you do it uh, as controlled as possible with this technique, in my opinion, for- uh, well, The question of Abbas, that he mentioned that, uh, uh, Suppose the, the, the erexis is widened and the extension, uh, radial extension happened. What you do? If, uh, there is no problem. If you, have, if you have an extension of the posterior capsule, you could try to make it circular and to yes, bring it yes. into a healthy this, posterior this, capsule. This I have mentioned, yes. Yeah, of course. As, as exactly the same as you, as you answered. I, I think, sir, if it's still... still uh, uh, with the same size or less than the pupil, the IL optic, you, you ca we can do it. If it's it's larger than, I I, I will be scared by uh, if, if putting the IL in back. That if you have a three piece IOL, you okay. could have more than the optic. No problem. Okay, <laughs> sir. Uh, my uh, my professors, I can sacrifice myself if we don't have any time because the time the old time is over. Yeah. Uh, okay. I can sacrifice myself. I, I, I may cancel yeah. my presentation. Uh, no, no, no. Why, why Dr. Uh, Hussain? Because we have a, a meeting. We, we, we have to go all for the other meeting you on, the other, on the other side. No, not me, but, Which, our, but our department. So, I may, I, so I, may sh I may short my us? presentation in, in three minutes. Uh, you can Mahmoud. complete, and the persons who has another meeting, they can yeah, leave. We'll join them later, no problem. We can join them later. What do you? <clears throat> okay. Sam, you can complete your okay. talk. Okay. okay, sir. Uh, okay. Yeah, Sam, go can ahead, yeah, Sam. Can, can you see my slide now? Yes. 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 Share, full, share screen, yeah, Sam. Okay. Yeah, I, I have shared. It's okay? Yes. yes. So, so, I will skip the first slides. The scaffold IL. The scaffold where the, the word scaffold uh, means in the old dictionaries, the supporting framework. So like the, the multi-layer framework used by the, by the workers uh, and the builders to go up. So it's the same idea, the supporting framework, IL. In case when you have, now I'm sharing my video, it's working? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's working well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if uh, when you have a posterior capsular tear during surgery, uh, you have two options. Other, uh, the first one is to complete, but still having the risk of dropping of the fragments or the new, or even all the nucleus down into the vitreous. The other option is to convert to the extra capsular cardiac surgery. So if we are keen to keep our surgery sutureless and with a small incision, we may put we may put the IL, which is preferable to be three-piece IL, uh, in the sulcus after uh, getting the, the fragments or, or the part of the nucleus up in the anterior chamber and putting them on a side, on, supported by the iris, and protected and surrounded by uh, uh, a sufficient amount of viscoelastic. As I'm showing now in this video, <clears throat> I got a capsule tear uh, with the last fragments with the last two small fragments. So I am putting now the three PSIL in sulcus, while the two pieces are on, the, on our left side in the anterior chamber. So completing the insertion now of the IL very carefully and thoroughly not to push the fragments inside or down, down into the vitreous. Uh, now I'm rotating the, the, the haptic, the other haptic to put it uh, and the sulcus completely. <clears throat> and and uh, uh, inspecting carefully and spying the fragments, no. spying uh, the fragments no. uh, not to be uh, slipped posteriorly. Now I'm sure that the fragments are up and the IL is below them. The matter, the, the point here, how to complete or, or extract these fragments. I will keep my, wo my wound, my main corneal wound is small as, a, as, as such. So it's, it's quite difficult to uh, deliver them through piecemeal delivery. So I will complete them 
uh, by the FECO emulsification as usual, but, but very, very slowly with a minimal power, high, higher vacuum and the, the lowest power to keep the, to, not to hurt the corneal endothelium. I'm going now to emulsify and aspirate the remaining fragments, keeping all the time cooling on the anterior chamber and the endothelium, either by the saline or the viscoelastic material. Uh, for, and for the sake of time, I will shift to, this, to the second video. Uh, and I'm sorry for the bad resolution because this uh, quote from the LCD of the OR in our university hospital, when some of, of my colleague got a capsule tear while the, the, the other half is still inside the eye, so I, I picked it up in the anterior chamber and implanted one piece because it, uh, the three piece was not available at that time. So I implanted the IL down the nucleus and above the anterior capsule. So the nucleus is now supported by these ILs, and I am not, I am not more scared from dropping. So I will complete the FECO emulsification the anterior chamber the same under the higher vacuum and lowest power, and after cooling of the of the endothelium all the time with the uh, viscoelastic or the viscous material, not viscoelastic. Thoroughly and carefully and putting the, uh, the tip of the probe down to be, to be uh, uh, cracking or emulsifying the nucleus from its posterior side because it's supported by the IL with no fear. Yeah, as you are seeing now, it's coming easy with fragmentation uh, with the help of my chopper. And unfortunately, I don't. I, I didn't get the pictures for the first morning, but my but my kind resident uh, told me that the cornea was so fine and clear. <clears throat> Skip to the last case. Yeah, it's okay as you are seeing in, in this video. It's okay, but and and uh, the air bubble, the last case. When you are assisting a beginner, and, the, and, and despite all instructions and, and all caution, uh, the, the, the beginner may be catch the posterior capsule uh, <clears throat> accidentally without any uh, without a, any care about it. So this this uh, uh, this resident catch the caught the posterior capsule at the first at the first time, at the early time of the surgery. So the options here were to convert to the extra cap or to complete my uh, procedure as, as a FECO emulsification. So I brought the nucleus up in the anterior chamber, keeping the, the, the cortical matter inside the bag as such, and bought this one piece IL because also the three piece was not available. So I have it the whole, almost the whole nucleus in the anterior chamber now, the IL in the pupil in, or in the sulcus, the nucleus above and the cortical matter below. So I will complete the fecal emulsification of the nucleus <clears throat> uh, following the same uh, uh, technique, the higher va vacuum and the lowest power and protection of the endothelium with the thorough injection of visco viscous material. So I'm keeping it to catch it from the side because it's somewhat sticky or very close to the endothelium. I, I don't, I, I didn't, I didn't like to push it, not to hit the, the endothelium, but I, I entered by the chopper to press the IL back to get a depth or space behind it or below it. Then I tried to catch it from its posterior side and completed the phaco emulsification in the anterior chamber for this nucleus. What about the, corti the cortical matter remaining in the bag? Okay, after completion of the phaco emulsification of the nucleus, 
I am going now to do anterior vitrectomy because the, the capture tear was central and very wide. So there's a, a vitreous prolapse. So I, I have to do anterior vitrectomy properly first, and then started to remove the cortical matter by the irrigation aspiration. And at the same time, I used the cutter uh, 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 as a, a aspiration cannula for the, the push for the apparent parts of the and the large parts of the cortical matter. So it's a way, it's one of the ways to, to get the, cort the cortical matter remaining in the bag under this IL. The other option uh, could be the pars plana. Uh, I didn't do it that, that time, but I, I thought about it. After that, I, I could remove all the cortical matter in the bag from the pars plana uh, approach. Now it's almost clear or completely clear bag and the IL in place. And I'm, I used to put an, uh, my lovely uh, air bubble at the end of the surgery to, to make sure that there is no vitreous prolapse. There's, the pupil is, is okay and the IL is supported. And thank you very much. Well done, Dr. Hussain. Good job, thank Dr. You, Hussain. Thank you, sir. That's Excellent as usual, Hussain. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you, sir. It's my honor. But the, one one comment in my yes. in, uh, in doing uh, FECO in uh, while vitreous is prolapsed and you have a scaffold uh, IOL, which is a very excellent idea actually. Uh, I do uh, encourage you to lower the bottle because while the pressure inside the eye is high, you might lose both the IOL and the fragments of the nucleus. So I would yes. like to advise you to lower the bottle inside the eye slightly. Okay, 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 sir. Thank you for this. Got, got, got notice, uh, because I, 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 I had a good rexis, so I was uh, assured about that. But it's a good notice, sir. Thank you very much. Any questions, there, Dr. Menahem, from the audience? Thank you very much for all. If there's any question from the audience, you could Thank you, Dr. Thank raise. Thank you, Dr. Mahan. Nobody is raising his hand now. Okay. Uh, Thank you all. <coughs> Ahmed Sam is raising his hand. I will. Okay. Uh, Ahmed Sam is raising his hand. Uh, Please. Yes. Uh, thank you, Doctor, for uh, this uh, uh, great uh, presentation for these cases. Uh, just a question for uh, the last case. Uh, I noticed that uh, you didn't make uh, a kina court uh, in the EC to <coughs> stain the vitreous. Uh, you already noticed that there, uh, there is no vitreous prolapse or um, you just, uh, when you make that scaffold, you know that there is no vitreous. Yeah, okay. Uh, the, the, uh, I didn't use, uh, I didn't, uh, I, or, mean, or, or always, always, yeah. Yes, I, I know. Yeah, I know, sir. Soon, yeah. yeah, yeah, I know, sir. Uh, I didn't, uh, I'm not using the vitreous. I'm not. I'm not using the tramcinolone injection to make sure that the vitreous is clear, is not present in the chamber or not. I used to to deal it, to deal with that, with the, the my my inspecting eye experience because I when I when I picked the nucleus up, I injected the viscous a lot a lot of the viscous material to press it down or to tap it down again. And I was okay. sure because I'm inspecting the, my pupil elsewhere and when I'm moving, because of the video uh, was edited, uh, I'm moving the chopper all the time all over the anterior chamber to check if there is some uh, vitreous nickel hanging or not. Uh, okay. But I, 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 don't, I, I didn't use the uh, trams. May I add a comment, topic. please? Thank you for your question. May I add a uh, comment, question. please? Dr. Hisham, I have a Dr. Hisham, comment. The use of uh, triamcelone in uh, vitreous prolapse and posterior capsular tear is still a matter of controversy because of uh, enlarged tear, enlarged posterior capsular tear and, uh, and the vitreous uh, uh, herniation in the anterior chamber. The, the vitreous uh, will be stained using uh, triamcelone. It will never stain only the knuckle in the in front of the lens or in the AC, but it will stain the vitreous behind as well and you will, you may lose the, uh, the contrast reflex. of red reflex. Yeah, okay, so, sir, but 
Yeah, for difference. Uh, uh, but it uh, it was to be used uh, at the end as a little amount to stain uh, a very little uh, uh, remnant if it's present and uh, to be sure that it is clear. But if the vitreous filling the anterior chamber, it is not wise to use uh, the triamisolon uh, for, uh, for the sake of uh, to avoid the posterior vitreous staining and you will lose the contrast of the, uh, of the red reflex. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. The I'm other uh, meeting will start. So uh, it is very nice to have I met you and uh, thank you for all joining, joining the meeting. Already, already, I found him meeting the Tani Bada or Dr. Mohammed Bada. He made a presentation. Oh, on the group of the other professional. Oh, okay, okay, okay. On the group of the other guys. We should leave now to join Dr. Mohammed Mella. Thank you, thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank you very much for all. Thank you, Rakesh. Rakesh, thank you. Nice to meet you. Goodbye, Rakesh. See you again. I'll wait for you on uh, Friday. Yeah, Rakish. I will wait for you on Friday at seven o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sir. Okay. Uh, now. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, uh, doctor. Doctor, I have Sarah to tell us the statistics of the meeting yet. <تصفيق> ايوه دكتور محمد ثواني بس هي هتظهر بعد شويه من و... من وقف الميتنج اه طيب تمام ماشي <تصفيق> فندم طيب خلاص ماشي خلاص ماشي شكرا متشكرين قوي تعبناكم متشكرين دكتور هشام بيه دكتور حسام دكتور حسام دكتور عبد المجيد زي اول ليف زي اول ليفت اي ويل اند ذا ميتنج ناو اوكي ناو وي اند ذا ميتنج ناو وي كان اند متشكرين لكل الحضور وتشرفونا تاني بكره ان شاء الله الساعه 8 في ميتنج على نفس القناه وهبعت لكم الرابط على الاماكن الثانيه وفي كومبرنسيف كورس في جلوكوما الساعه 7 للساعه 11 على نفس القناه ده كورس طويل قوي 15 سبيكر ان شاء الله ثانك يو فيري ماتش فور اتندنس